Are you confused by the Redshift, Ridiculous, Aces, OCIO color settings? I hope to fix that in this video. So if you're considering using Aces and color management and After Effects and Cinema 4D, understand that it can be a little confusing, but to summarize it, it's basically saying, hey, we wanna make sure that all of our colors can look the best on every single monitor possible. And if we have to convert colors to apply to a specific monitor or output space, we can get a good looking image. All we have to do is in our project settings, we hit control D on our keyboard and we select the open color IO button. So I have this Redshift render previewing right now. I'm gonna turn that off convert everything to open color IO. And then if you have any textures or materials in your scene, most of them should be in a default sRGB space to begin with. So you can hit the convert scene colors, click okay. And Cinema 4D is gonna do its best to try and get the corresponding colors in the sRGB color space and get them to match the ACES color space trying to do most of the work for you, you might have to go in and fuss with some things. And to do that, what you do is you double click on whatever material or color. If you have a material, for example, you can select the color space of your image. Now I should say that most images that you get online, most images in general will probably end up being sRGB or Rec. 709 anyways. If you are more advanced and you're watching this video, then thank you for watching. Uh, you probably know more than what I'm gonna cover in this tutorial. On average, most things will be sRGB, and then Cinema 4D is doing everything on the back end to convert it into ACES for you. So with that said, you don't really need to do much in Cinema 4D at this point, because if you go up to your render settings and you go to your globals, Color management is controlled by our main project settings now. So if I hit control D again, all of this is controlled here. You could very well just check this or you could go back to basic and then now we can control our aces here. But hey, let's just let Cinema 4D do the work for us. Work smarter, not harder. So our goal with working in aces is to take this image that we see in our Redshift render view and get it to look exactly like we need it to in After Effects. So I'm gonna render this out and we're gonna jump over to After Effects now. So we're in After Effects now and I imported my two images and I created a copy of that image to show you what you might experience when you import something without doing any color management. So I have this default frame right here and hey, it looks fine. It looks pretty close and this is getting really into the weeds of color management and pixel peeping. But look at this highlight right here in particular. It's very bright. It's overexposed. We lost all the detail. All right, it's not that big of a deal. It's a specular highlight. But if we go over to Cinema 4D and look at Redshift, this is the frame that we created and it's a little bit darker. It doesn't have as much contrast. And if our goal is to get our image to look exactly like we need it to in After Effects, and we have an art director who's like, no, we need it to be an exact match, there's a problem here. Why does this image in Cinema 4D, as the default color management, come in a little bit brighter than the other? After Effects is doing something weird and dumb and I don't like it, so that's why I've opted for using OCIO. So now, if we go into our timeline here, I can see that I have an image that better represents the look that we need to from Cinema 4D. I dare say these images are identical and no one could tell the difference. So we need to go into Aces. What we're gonna do is we're gonna delete these two images that we imported into our project and start from scratch. So if you've never used Aces in After Effects before or OCIO, this is what you would do. You go to your project settings right here. This is your color tab. We want to set this to OCIO color manage and it's going to do a bunch of stuff on the back end and sciency things to get everything to be working in aces. Basically a lot of the things that Cinema 4D is doing we're trying to get After Effects to also speak the same language. We're going to go to OCIO. We're going to keep this as aces CG and display in aces sRGB because most of the time we need to output into sRGB or Rec. 709. Click OK, we're gonna import that image again. So now when we take this in and we drag this into our scene, 
hey, look, that looks pretty spot on. That's exactly what we want, right? Well, here's the thing about anything that you import using the OCIO color management tools and After Effects. You have to make sure that you're selecting the correct color space for it. So if I hit Control Alt G on my keyboard, we can see that we're interpreting the footage and we're basically saying, hey, what is the color space of this default image? Is it aces? Is it from another camera? It's basically like, a super complex LUT. So I want to set this to working space CG or ACES CG here. Just set it to ACES CG because we know that we rendered this in ACES CG. But what about an image that is not in ACES? Like, let's say if I were to go to my file explorer and I have this image, this PNG, that is probably rendered or it is rendered in sRGB. So what I want to do is re-import that into After Effects. So I'll just drag this image in right here and we can put this into our scene and that looks terrible. I mean, I just made it squash, but Control Z, Control Alt, Control F, Ugh. Control Alt Shift G H, size up to our frame. That looks terrible. That looks gross. Basically, what's happening is that this is trying to convert this into aces and it's not in aces. We need to go in to our interpret footage main, go to color, go to our input, and we need to make sure that we set this to output sRGB. And the reason why we do that is because this image was already defaulted. It was already exported. I was output at, at sRGB and we need to convert it back into ACES before we convert it back into sRGB or Rec. 709. I know that sounds super complicated, but most of the time a PNG or a JPEG will probably come in as sRGB. So you'll need to go in and take the image, interpret it by hitting control G and setting the override media color space to sRGB. Click OK. Now I'm gonna give you one more example to show you what you'd use in an animation. I found the sequence that I wanna import. Make sure I import this EXR sequence just like this. And now if I double click on this sequence, we have our little animation and it looks fine. It gets the point across, but I didn't interpret it correctly. So I'm gonna hit Control Alt G on my keyboard. Make sure that I set the default space to aces. And now these are the correct colors. So what I'm trying to say is that you need to make sure that any footage that you import into After Effects, you're basically telling it what default color space is this. Most of the time it's going to be sRGB, but if you export a 3D render out of Cinema 4D using the ACES workflow, it will most likely, as long as you don't mess with anything, going to be ACES CG. Click OK. Now, there's just one more thing that you need to know. If I take this animation and I make a new comp of it and I play it back, looks fine. Our display and our viewport in After Effects is converting it into our output space, what we want our eyes to see. And the way we need to consume this content is not through After Effects, but on our phones or on YouTube or a TV or something. So when we hit Control M on our keyboard, we have to go to our output module and find whatever render settings we need. So that could be ProRes, it could be H.264 if you're just trying to post something to Instagram, etc., etc. You set your preset, whatever you want it to be, you have to go into that preset by clicking on it, go to color, and we can see that it's going to output into ACES as well. And we don't want that. We want to make sure that we output to Rec. 709 or sRGB. So you have to make sure that you set the output color space for your renders. So you'd click OK, and then you find wherever you want to save it. And just for example, I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to go in and I'm going to set the color space back to working space ACES CG. And I'm going to render this out and show you what would happen so that you know what's going to happen if you don't do it correctly. Six and a half hours later. So if you render anything and you use the default settings in After Effects when you're using the OCIO workflow and you double click the file, it might look something like this. It's gonna be super saturated. It's gonna be super contrasty. It's gonna look terrible. And the reason why is we did not convert it 
into the desired color space that we want to. So we would have to go back, re-render that, not a big deal if it's just 48 frames, but if you have a full video, that's annoying. So make sure that you set the final output space to the desired color space, which would be most of the time Rec. 709. So that is my workflow that I use for Aces, Cinema 4D, Redshift, and After Effects. I hope you learned something. I have been spending way too much time on this stuff because I'm a colorblind artist, so I hope this helps you. If it does, let me know in the comment section down below. If you'd like to help out the channel, it would mean a ton to me if you could hit that like button or the subscribe button to join the party. It lets me know that I'm making content that is valuable to you, and I will leave you with the final tip. As always, eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and you'll make some... Goodbye, my friends. Bye.